Hi, hello, it's Reti here at our winter fairyland. After a long time, I finally decided to put out a new video to give you an update and show you how our land has changed and how does it look now in the winter. And when I was just ready to shoot the first scene of this video, my camera fell down from the tripod and my microphone broke. And you know what's the most ridiculous part of it? That my previous microphone broke exactly the same way a few months ago and that was one of the other reasons why I haven't made any videos for a while. And of course it was clear for me that this was a clear sign from a magical universe that I should not just not make more videos. But then I decided to give it another chance and make this video with the voice over. If you have noticed that sometimes the sound is not synced, you are right, it is not. So if it's annoying for you, better stop watching because it's not gonna get any better. But then you will never find out how our land looks in the winter. Definitely the greatest change that we have made on our land and the most difficult one is that we had to cut down 35 pear trees. Yes, you heard it right. This wood here is all pear wood. So why did we do such a crazy thing? You thought we came here to live more in the harmony with nature and all this, right? And now the first thing that we do is cutting down fruit trees. Yes, of course, it was a super hard decision for us as well. So we had this pear orchard where the trees were obviously planted way too close together. Like there was one tree here, one tree here and one tree here sometimes with just one meter between them so I don't know what was going on in the heads of the people who planted those trees but it was obvious that there is no room to develop for them like this one here, one here, another one here so we hired a professional tree expert extremely nice person who deeply cares about trees and has a lot of knowledge about trees and he confirmed that many of our pear trees were sick or dying and main reason for it being that they were planted so close together and had no room to develop and the only way to give a chance of survival for some of the trees was to thin them out and cut down the diseased ones so we ended up cutting down half of them we also asked him to prune some of our pear trees and to teach us how to prune because we still have around 40 pear trees to take care of but turns out that pruning trees is quite the art form and I think we need much more practice to be able to do it ourselves really another new thing on our land is this greenhouse it took three months to arrive and a lot of brain activity and nerves to build it up. We had to hack deep into the brain of a Chinese engineer who designed this thing and who used all kinds of complicated systems just to save one screw. But fortunately my husband is an engineer as well so he was able to hack into the brain and figure that out finally. So somehow we were able to build this thing up. Some people warned us that the greenhouses are likely to fly away here. And we didn't want to make a concrete foundation for it. Because we just don't want to have concrete on our land. So we made a timber frame which is over uh, 100 kilos and we secured it to the ground with those one meter long metal sticks <sighs> This snowman like looking thing here is my lime tree You might have seen in our tree planting videos that we planted a lot of trees and This lime tree had a lot of new growth. It rooted really really well but we have had few frosty nights and the leaves of this tree actually got a little bit uh, frosty or 
icy and I got scared that it might kill the tree, the frost, so I have covered all my citrus trees in those thermal blankets. I hope it's good for them, I hope they will survive the winter. I have created several strawberry beds. This here is my Hügelkultur strawberry bed, which basically means that I gathered a pile of old logs and piled them up and covered them with soil. And when the logs are decomposing, they are releasing nutrients and that is feeding the strawberries for years to come. I know this one is very small for a Hügelkultur, but I hope somehow it will work. I will show you how few of the trees are doing that we were planting in one of the previous videos. This here is a plum tree and it's doing really really well, it has a lot of new growth. And I have created a tree guild around it. Uh, fruit tree guilds are a permaculture method of uh, planting together plants that are supporting each other. So I have some fava beans here, some lettuce and strawberries again. Of course, strawberries in the straw. found a lot of medicinal plants on our land. Like this wild calendula, we have tons and tons and tons of wild calendula. Mmm, good, huh? I would like to eat it. Also found a lot of wild lupins on our land. This here is a wild lupin. The funny story is that I bought lupin seeds and I was um, I planted a lot of lupin seeds because I wanted to have them as companion plants for my trees. And when they sprouted, I found out that actually I have a lot of wild ones everywhere around. So we're gonna have a lot of lupins apparently. I am super fascinated by the biodiversity of different plants popping up on each square meter of the land. Since it's raining so much, the nature has become so green and so many different species of plants are coming up. It's just amazing. Every day I keep finding new plants that I didn't even know that they are growing here. This, for example, seems to be a wild rose, another one. I found already a few. We seem to have quite a lot of them. I love it. I absolutely love it. One of my favorite things to do recently is to take my teapot and to go out to the nature and to harvest some wild herbs. Like this here, for example, is calendula. And we have a lot of medicinal herbs growing all around and I just see which one speaks to me this day. One of my favorite recipes that I will do today is wild calendula, which is a very very good medicinal herb. It has a lot of medicinal properties, it's anti-inflammatory and anti-fungal, so it keeps all kinds of viruses and disease away from us. And with calendula you really don't have to worry about over-harvesting because the more of the flowers that you pick off, the more it encourages the plant to put out more flowers. And I really like to mix it with wild mint, or it's also called apple mint or water mint. We have a lot of it growing on our land, and it gives the tea this nice minty flavor that makes it really, really enjoyable, more than the calendula itself. The trench at the back of our land that was totally dry in the summer has filled up with water. The water is flowing like crazy. It looks almost like a small river. So, right here, our very own little waterfall. It's been raining extremely much this year. People say it's the wettest winter over a long time and many people's lands have become completely underwater. Uh, for us, fortunately, it's just a little bit of land that is turning a little bit swampy. But most of our land is still manageable. Just nice and clean.
the well of course is absolutely full as well if you're wondering how our snake story continued the day after we saw the snakes we took quick action and we filled all the holes in the ruin with cob haven't seen any snakes since then but probably they are in winter sleep anyways our first winter living off grid has of course been challenging as to be expected but we have definitely enjoyed it and there is just so much beauty in all of it